Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and today I want to talk to you about the Baofeng UV5R, 5R Plus, 5R series uh, of handheld ham radios. Now I got this idea from a viewer that routinely messages me on Instagram for some advice and things like that. Uh, and he was asking about radios. And it led me to, I want to do a video on how to do some very basic programming. Something where you can buy the radio, get your frequencies plugged in, turn off all the crap that doesn't need to be on, get it on you and start communicating with your team as fast as possible. Because I really think that that is what a lot of people are interested in when talking about buying these radios. Let's get a couple things out of the way first. I am not a licensed ham radio operator. I don't care about the license, I'll never get the license. You can kiss my ass, government. Two, I'm not gonna tell you that you need to get the license, although, Ham radio guys will tell you that you need to get the whatever license it is to do transmitting on here. Uh, that license does not stop you from transmitting. You know, it does not grant you or stop you from transmitting. The radios work with, with or without a license. You don't get some special code to activate your transmissions. Three, nothing I say should be considered legal advice. And number four, if you want a more in-depth uh, review of these on how to maybe set up uh, repeaters on when you should and shouldn't use squelch and other and, and just various other things on these radios I'm not the guy to talk to there are plenty of, of resources out there so without further ado let's get you talking to your team on these radios all right so here is your basic Baofeng UV5R or 5R variant. Uh, these two are 5R pluses. This one's a regular UV5R. Um, I've had, oh, I think it's this one. I can't remember anymore. But I believe it's this one I've had for six years or seven years now, still kicking. Uh, I use this, as you can see with the short radio, uh, as something, as one that I clip onto myself or short antenna I should say, as one that I clip onto myself when I have to use it that way. These two are usually in something. This is this is the one that I keep on my body armor. This is one that I um, oftentimes will put in my truck. That way I can use it with this. This is a way that I used to use it on my body armor too. We can go over that in a minute. So. You have, I have these two already set up. Oftentimes what you'll have, I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug this, unscrew this so that it doesn't get in the way. You will get your radio, which comes short like this with the regular battery. I have a long battery on this. And yes, it's gonna speak Chinese to you. It's gonna have loud beeps. The screen is going to light up, which I'll show you here. Screen lights up and all that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to shut it up so there's no more talking. Uh, we're going to shut the lights off and we're going to program in your first frequency, whatever it is the agreed upon frequency for your group is. So how you choose your frequency is gonna be up to you. There are plenty of lists out there that show available frequencies, frequencies that are heavily used, frequencies that are uh, more commonly monitored, things like that. So that's all on you. This is how I reset this back to factory specs so I could show you this video. So what you want to do first is you want to hit the menu button here. And the menu button is going to instantly start annoying you. So the first thing I want to do is shut off. See that reset all? That reset all is the factory specs. I want to shut off. And you're scrolling through with these arrow buttons. You can go up or down. Boy, 
voice. First thing I want to do is shut off that damn voice. So you're going to hit menu again, which is going to change. If you can see where that arrow is at next to voice. And that arrow moved down to Chai, Chinese. Then you scroll through. English, off. Once you hit off, hit menu again so it goes back up to voice. And that is now set for off. No more voice. So keep scrolling through. I am going to turn the beep off. So same thing, hit, hit menu. It'll switch it down to the on. Scroll till it says off. Menu again. Ah, so much quieter. So the next thing I'm going to go for is the lights. Now, before I go to the lights, why do I want the lights off? Uh, won't I not be able to see it in the dark and things like that? The problem is this thing lights up like a freaking Christmas tree when it's dark out. And if you are actually communicating with your team in a time where you want it to be dark and things like that, you want the lights off on this. There's many radio pouches that don't, that aren't thick enough to block out the light. Some radio pouches even leave the screen out to where it, uh, you know, you can see the screen outside of the radio pouch. To me, it's just always better to have this thing as quiet and as dark as possible. Um, you, you should be, you should be setting your radio, having your radio in sync with the other people before you leave camp. So, menu. Let's get those lights off. Um, before we do lights, UHF or VHF is going to be your choosing. Ah. Text LED, orange, hit menu to go down to orange, purple, off. Back up. RX LED is blue, orange, purple, off. Back up. Purple, down there, choose, off. Now you have no lights, you have no sounds, you have no beeps. I'm going to go ahead and exit here. I'm going to shut it off and I'm going to show you something. That is the only beep you can't get, get, get rid of, is that initial beep. Now, if you have headphones or you know some sort of electronic ears hooked to this, you will only be able to hear it through that. If you have the ear, the um, the windy clear tube type earplug, uh, earbud, again, you will only be able to hear it through that. If you have a speaker like this or nothing like this, you will hear it through this speaker or that speaker. So what I do when I turn it on is I turn it on and then I turn it up. That, that makes sure that I don't ever lose that sound discipline, that noise discipline, and then turn it up. Okay, so you're ready to turn it on, you're ready to turn it on and plug in your team's, uh, your group's agreed upon frequency. So I'm just gonna go plug, I already set my this radio up for a frequency just to show you. Plug it in. And that's it. You're done. As you can see, it's it's doing just fine. Now, one of the things you want to do once you get to here is plug is, is lock that in because you're going to accidentally press these buttons. You will, I promise. So right down here, the hashtag, the pound me too, is a little key. Press and hold that. I want you to look up next to the battery, which is up here. See that up here? See that little key up here? That means that's now locked in. So when you press these, when you're in the field, which you will do, it's not going to change the frequency. You still have it locked into the rest of the radios. 
So what do I do with the second one, the second one down? So you can unlock it, right? And go A, B, A, B, right? Now switch it down to this frequency. Oftentimes what I do is, well, you, you, should, you should probably have two frequencies, two, you know, your, uh, your, your primary and backup frequencies. There are many other ways to do this. There are computer ways to do this. This just gets you on the road as fast as possible. Anyway, so have a backup frequency. Therefore, if you're getting a lot of feedback, a lot of static, whatever, on your primary frequency, um, you guys have a secondary one over your comms. You say, hey, we're switching to secondary frequency. You unlock it, you unlock it, switch A, B, and then relock it. And now you're on your B frequency. So really quick, I promised you I would talk about this. Uh, this is basically a CB, you know, we, what you equivalent to like a CB. It's got a clip on the back. It plugs into the side of your radio. You can relocate your radio wherever you want on your kit. Um, where I don't, I can tell you where I don't put it is I don't put it anywhere up here right because it gets in the way of switching shoulders with a rifle and i don't put it on the side where i would bring a rifle into retention things like that i would much prefer to have it here back here or up on the back somewhere people often say well up on the back you can't touch it well that's what you have teammates for if you don't have teammates maybe that's not the best place for you anyway so i'll put this here run this either over my shoulder or through my cummerbund up to the front of me, run it on my chest somewhere, you know, down here, over here, and they have behind this little door right here is an auxiliary jack, so you can use it either loud, you know, with nothing plugged into it, or you can run an auxiliary jack up to your electronic ears uh, an auxiliary cord up to your electronic ears and use this to talk through hello 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 and hear through your pelters or Howard lights or razors or whatever you're using so that's it that is the quick and dirty of you bought your radio get into contact with your team ASAP all the other programming nonsense you can get from various resources online, from various other YouTube channels. This is the down and dirty, get a frequency in there and get talking to your team. Cause that's really gonna be the most important thing you likely do with this radio. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe, all that good fun stuff. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, there's of course Patreon and all kinds of affiliate links. And of course you can find the affiliates list at rttgunsgear.com. The website is down below. Thank you to my patrons for all your support. Thank you everybody out there who's sticking with the channel and uh, we'll talk to you later.